Hey guys, Kat here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do my Christmas haul. So in this haul, I have gifts from other people and also some books I bought myself. Um, it's not necessarily like a Christmas gift that I gave myself, it's more like books that I bought when I was out about in town and they were only a dollar or some books that I ordered to give as gifts and then I read them first to check to make sure that they were good. Because I have definitely been burned in the past where I thought someone would love this book and then they were horrified. And I'm talking about you, North Water by Ian McGuire. That was bad. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm just gonna talk about the books that I bought myself. One is Daily Rituals by Mason Curry. So this is a massive collection of famous people and the way in which they went about doing their work. So most of the people in here are writers or musicians, there are also some painters, also some scientists, and it discusses the way in which they have their routines, what they eat, what time they get up, how long they do things, what kind of order they have. Some people are quite mundane and some people are pretty interesting. So. I think that this will be really great. I'm not all the way through yet, but if it holds the course, it should be really interesting. And the other one that I got is The Wasp That Brainwashed the Caterpillar by Matt Simon. Evolution's Most Unbelievable Solutions to Life's Biggest Problems. So this is a hilarious book, first off, and it goes through different animals in the animal kingdom that have bizarre or funny or hilarious things to survive, essentially. So there are worms that live in anuses, and there are bugs that bite off tongues and replace the tongues. There are the ways in which different birds build their nests, and spiders use bubbles to live underwater. There is just a bunch of funny stories. So the, one of the things that I really loved about it though also is that every single um, entry has a picture. So some of these animals I wouldn't know what they look like but I think that the pictures are really great. So I found this hilarious and the author knows that he is funny. Not in like a pretentious way, in like uh, he's actually very funny and he's right about it kind of way. So I'm just gonna read you a very funny thing that like when I read it, I immediately had to read it to my fiance because it just had me laughing. So this is like a little side note. So there are funny little side notes and tidbits that are interspersed with each entry. And this one is called Butts, an underappreciated resource. I once had an editor somewhat seriously suggest that I seek therapy for my pro proclivity for writing about animals that do weird things with their anuses. But it's not my fault, really. It's that a lot of critters do weird things with their anuses or, in the case of the pearlfish, with other critters' anuses. I think this speaks to the larger issue of our anthropomorphization of the animal kingdom. Is it weird to us that pearlfish swim up sea cucumber butts and that there's a species of leech that feeds only on the rectums of hippos? unlucky hippos? Sure, but the natural world has been humming along with such eccentricities for millennia. Or maybe I'm trying to justify not spending a bunch of money on therapy. Ironically enough though, only a therapist could tell me that. So Matt Simon is very much aware that a lot of the things he's writing about are <laughs> um, the kind of thing that you laugh and chuckle about but you wouldn't necessarily like discuss in polite company and I just found it hilarious and I really recommend it. Um, for anyone who likes science or something gross or something weird or bizarre, um, biology, chemistry, evolution, this is for you. Okay, and the next three are ones that I picked up from a local bookstore. Two of these books are a dollar. So the first one is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I feel like I don't need to explain this one. It was a dollar and I have read a ton of Peter Pan retellings and I have seen Peter Pan movies, I have never actually read the original Peter Pan, and I need to remedy that. Also for a dollar is The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. So I've heard a lot of things, really great things about this. When I read Love in Laura Case, and when I read The Little Paris Bookshop, books that were similarly recommended was The Elegance of the Hedgehog. So I think that this will be really great. It is about the different tenants in a Parisian apartment building and kind of how their lives intertwine and how the concierge 
has a few secrets in how she views the world around her. So I think it will be a really darling read and I hope that it lives up to the hype. And the last one I bought is one that I have been dying to try for a while. They had the whole trilogy but I just couldn't bring myself to buy the other two because I'm not sure if I will like it and also the other two are expensive. Um, this is The Claiming of Sleeping Beauty by Anne Rice writing as Anne Ruckalore. So Anne Rice as Anne Ruckalore is um, kind of sexually explicit and this is actually a Sleeping Beauty retelling in a BDSM erotica style. So I am interested and I will see what happens. Um, the last book that I bought that had stuff of that tone, one was horror and one should be burned. So not such a great track record, but I'm willing to give it a go because I do really like Anne Rice's writing style from what I have read, uh, The Vampire Lestat, etc. Okay, so getting into gifts. My aunt sent me a bunch of her reads that she has read lately, um, and because I read Behind Closed Doors, she also sent me The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. And I honestly don't know much about it. I just know that this is like a huge hardback that I could kill someone with. Um, also, she sent me A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. I don't know about it, but I've seen it on booktube a lot. I'm waiting to see if it's good before I dedicate time to read it. And also, The Stars Are Fired by Anita Shreve. I have not read Anita Shreve, somehow I've always steered away from her, but if gifts are given to me, I will at least try them. So we will see how these go. Um, and the last book that my aunt sent me is one that I really love, and it is called Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. So I have heard of Ikigai before because I'm also interested in minimalism and kind of minimal living aesthetics and values. So in this book, it basically takes many elements and tries to fit it into finding your purpose of life. So some of these elements are finding what you love, what will make you money, what the world needs, and what can sustain you. So combining those things together gives you your ikigai. And then this talks about how to obtain the ikigai, how to maintain it, how to find the flow in your life that would enable you to work towards this. So. Um, I think this is going to be a really good book. I've already read through some of it and I really, really like it. So, funny enough, it happens to be um, by Hector Garcia and Frances Morales. And Morales um, wrote Love in Lowercase, which I read earlier this year. So yeah, Small World. And the last four books are books from my mother and my sister, and I requested them, so I knew I was going to love them, and I cannot wait to read them when I get home. The reason I'm not bringing them is because look at the size of these books. These are massive effing books, so can't bring them on vacation, but we'll definitely be reading them as soon as I get home. So let's start with the smallest, and it is Geek Love by Katherine Dunn. And this one is a family... A circus family basically creates um, mutations in their children to create their own circus freak show. And I've heard that this is like um, the weight of feathers, only super, super twisted and dark. So we shall see. Um, I have heard great things about it or horrible things about it, like depending which book reviewer you watch. So I am intrigued and it's gonna be dark and it's gonna be great. Also dark is The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. So just like look at this cover. Can we, can we just look at it? Oh, so nice. So this book follows August and Jack who are best friends. One of them starts to develop vivid hallucinations bordering on schizophrenia and they're trying to figure out if it's real or not and this originally came up on my radar because it is tagged as MM romance which I was very excited to see how that would play into it and then some people were saying it is baiting which I'm a little sad about. I hope that's not true, and I hope that something does happen or something is resolved. I don't like it when people label things and then the label isn't true. You naughty, naughty labelers, don't do that. Um, yeah, but I'm really excited about this and it should be very dark. And one of the things that I also like, I don't know if it will focus, but 
the pages themselves get progressively darker as the book goes on. Yeah, so I am really looking forward to this. I think it will be amazing and I love me a good dark tale. I love it. I love dark stuff. So next is Beasts Made of Night by Tochi Onyibuchi. And this one I have been dying to read all year. I've been talking about it all year. So in this one, we are in a magical realm where people's sins manifest as beasts. And there are these things, there are these mages that can slaughter the sin beast, but then they have to take the sin beast's form onto their body as a tattoo. And a lot of these mages go insane because they relive the memories of the sin beasts um, in their mind. One day, a young, like, kind of upstart cocky mage is picked to eat the sin of the king. And the story goes from there. So I'm just so excited about this. Like, these last four I've been dying to read all year. And I'm super stoked. Um, I cannot wait to come home and read this book. I'm so excited. I'm so, so, so excited. Okay, and the last book for my Christmas haul is the one that I'm most, most, most excited for, and I definitely can't bring it because it is absolutely huge, and it is Strange the Dreamer by Lenny Taylor. So I've been wanting to read this forever, and I just haven't managed to get my hands on it. It wasn't any, in any stores here, so I'm super lucky that I got it for a Christmas gift, and... I just want to read it so bad. Yeah, the back says, On the second Sabbath of Twelfth Moon in the city of Weep, a girl fell from the sky. Her skin was blue, her blood was red. It's all I need to know. I want to read it so bad. It's a bunch of my favorite booktubers. Favorite book of the year. So I really want to read it. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who gave me books for Christmas. Yeah, so that is my Christmas haul. And I cannot wait to come home and read them. I hope that you guys also got some amazing Christmas gifts. Have you read any of these books and would recommend one way or the other? If you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. It would really mean a lot. And without further ado, I'm just gonna say toodles for now. Bye! <laughs>